Hey, Shalom Warm Israel. First off, I would like to say, Ka Hala, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim Rakakodash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sisters that watch and sincerely believe, Shalom Warm to you as well. Uh, just back with another lesson uh, on trusting in the will of the Most High, trusting in the will of the Heavenly Father. I was listening to a video by one of the elders in the camp, Elder Yatazak, and he was going into a lesson on how uh, the will of the, the Heavenly Father is going to play out on earth as it is in heaven, just as spoken in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew, the sixth chapter. So in uh, just laying back in some off of, of, of his lesson, I just wanted to go more into the aspect of how we're supposed to trust in the in the will of the Lord at all times because I heard a saying a long time ago, uh, you want to make the most high laugh, then, then tell him your plans. And that's something that I'm getting more understanding on as I gather, as I gain more experience in the faith, that the will of the Heavenly Father is going to play out regardless of uh, how you try to force the course of the river or whatever the case is, or how you may see or perceive something in your own vein, mind, opinion, or your perception, the will of the Most High is going to always reign forward. That's why the scripture says in Isaiah 55 and 11 that the word of the Most High doesn't return void. So everything that the Most High has already established to accomplish is going to happen. Especially when it comes to the prophecies, but in this lesson, I just wanted to just exhort the Akim, the brethren, just to trust in the will of the Lord. Don't get caught up in how you see things and view things in your own vain mind and opinion, but always you want to always go to the, the measuring source, which is the scriptures, because uh, through the scriptures, that's how we get into the, the mind and intent of the of the of the heavenly father through his son, Yahweh Shah. But without further ado, I'm going to just read some scriptures. Hopefully this will edify the body. I'm going to start off here in Proverbs, the third chapter, and I'll start at verse five. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And we know when you go into that word heart in the Hebrew is lob, which means your mind. So it says, trust in the Lord with all your mind and leave not and, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So you're not supposed to lean into your own vain understanding. You may have certain uh, experiences that may give you confidence that you may be at a certain level on certain things, but you're not supposed to lean into your own understanding. Of course, the Lord does give us a sound mind, but a wise man is going to always filter their moves through what the scripture says, because that's how we come into the mind of the Lord by reading the, the, the word of God. That's how you understand the mind of God more so is going into the word of the Heavenly Father and not leaning into your own understanding. It says in all thy ways, it says in all thy ways, not in some of your ways. Now, now I'm going to just uh, lean into the Lord for, 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 for this, but not for that. It says in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. So in all of your ways and all of your decision making process, all of uh, what you put in your uh, good energy towards is supposed to be uh, acknowledging the ways of the Heavenly Father. And it says, and he shall direct our paths, meaning he's going to put you in the best position to succeed, to be blessed, to be uh, uh, prosperous. It says, be not wise in thine own eyes. And that happens to all of us. You know, the scripture says that wisdom puffeth up. So brothers, that come into this faith, uh, for example, you may come up on a certain level of knowledge to where you become wise in your own eyes, to where you're not really taking heed to the counsel of the Lord. You're not really taking heed to what the scripture says, but you're wanting to, to, to react and make moves and um, just plan based on what's in your own mind. And what's in your own mind, it could be directly in opposition to what the scripture says. It's, I'll read it again. Proverbs 3 and 7. It says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And we know that the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning of wisdom. That's how we're made wise, by fearing and acknowledging the Lord in all of our ways. 
And that's also how we depart from evil. That's how we depart from sin. Uh, I'm going to get another scripture. Because at this point, the brothers that's in the upright spirit, that's teaching the upright doctrine, you know, trusting in the Lord and not leaning into our own standing and not leaning onto our own understanding. It's got us this far. So we got to have faith that trusting in the Lord, that's, that's going to carry us through into the end. What did I want? Oh, yeah, I want to get something in the Apocrypha. Bear with me, Akim. I'm going to go to the Book of Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, the ninth chapter, and I'll start at the 13th verse. It says, for what man, it says, for what man is he that can know the counsel of the most high or what or select y'all who can think what the will of the Lord is. So sometimes that demon will jump on you to where you'll question certain things that the most high is doing, whether you may have a certain adversity and a certain predicament that's brought before you that you may not understand at that time. And you may start to question the Lord in your own mind. But we have to have faith and trust and believe that whatever we're going through, it's the will of the Lord at the end of the day. And that if we trust in the Lord, he's going to direct our paths to right. Even if we're going through a situation to where we feel our back is completely against the wall. It says, or who can think what the will of the Lord is? So we can't even begin to get on a level to comprehend and think about what the will of the Heavenly Father is. It says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. And right now we're mortal men. We're subject to death. We're bound by these chains of darkness, meaning these corruptible bodies. We're uh, working and striving to get immortality, but we haven't reached that level yet. So, so we have the thoughts of mortal men right now. So we can't trust in our own thoughts. It says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and our devices are but uncertain. It says, for the corruptible body presses down the soul in the earthy, in the earthy tabernacle, wave down the mind that muses upon many things. So these bodies that we, we're in, these are corruptible bodies that weigh down our soul and it weighs down our mind. So we can't begin to, to fathom and, and, and think about what the will of the Lord is and all of the, the thoughts and things that we have in our own mind. They're uncertain. There aren't certain thoughts. Now, there's a saying that a broken clock is right twice a day. So sometimes within your own mind, you might be on point. But you can't allow that to lead you to just trusting in your own mind in every decision because you're going to end up losing. You're going to end up through. It says, verse 16, here's the point. It says, and hardly do we guess a right at things that are upon the earth. And that's what I was saying, that saying. A broken clock is right twice a day because sometimes it, it says in hardly do we guess a right at things that, that are upon the earth. So hardly meaning sometimes meaning here and there do we guess a right at the things that are upon this earth. And it says and with labor do we find the things that are before us, but the things that are in heaven who have searched out. So we can't even begin to think on the level of what's in the heavens on the intention and the will that the creator established in the heaven that's actually pillaying out on the earth. It says, yeah, that's the point I wanted to get on that, man. So it says, and hardly do we guess a right at things that are upon the earth, man. And with labor, do we find the things that are before us, but the things that are in heaven who has searched out. So brothers, we, we haven't, uh, uh, been on the level to, to, to really uh, seek out what's in the heavens and to try to get on the level to see why the most high does what he does. That's really just a vein, uh, a chain of, of thoughts. If you if you're going into that mindset, if that makes sense. And for that, I'm going to get this real quick. So like you, I'm going to jump to another precept before I lose track of what I wanted to say. This is a. Uh, in the book of Isaiah. Yeah, this is Isaiah. Um, I believe it's like the yeah the 55th chapter. This is Isaiah 55. 
in verse eight. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. It says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So that's clear to the point. Your, our thoughts are not the thoughts of the most high and his ways are not our ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. So our arms are too short to box with the most high. We have to worry about the things that are set before us and depend on the Lord to guide our steps of right. We have to trust in the Lord and not lean into our own understanding in every aspect of our lives to the best of our ability. That's the only way that we're going to be in the best position moving forward. I'm going to get another scripture. I'm going to go to the book of Jeremy or Jeremiah. 17th chapter. This is Jeremiah chapter 17. Verse nine, it says the heart, which I broke down that word heart in the Hebrew is la'ab and it means your mind. So it says the heart, which is your mind, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It says, I, the Lord, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So that just goes back into how we're not supposed to trust in our own uh, vain uh, opinion or trust in our own vain uh, wisdom. Or lean unto our own understanding because the heart is deceitful above all things, man, and desperately wicked. Like if you get caught up in the counsel of your own mind, you can uh, go astray from what the will of the Lord is ultimately. And if you don't understand what the will of the Lord is, just pray and meditate on it. Seek counsel. Read the scriptures. Sometimes. Uh. Whatever uh, things is playing out at that particular time, it may be it may not be the time for you to fully understand at that appointed time. And the Lord may be set to reveal something to you later just to take you from another glory, to take you from glory to glory. So you got to trust in the will of the Lord that he always has your best interest in mind, no matter how grim and no matter how uh, adverse that situation could be at that particular time. And it's easier said than done. I'm speaking to myself, you know, as I speak in this lesson to brothers. It's an exhortation for all of us just to meditate and examine on these things and try to, you know, just improve and trust in, 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 and trusting in the will of the Lord. Ultimately, you know. So with all being said, uh, that's all the that I wanted to bring out in this lesson. I just want to just uh, land back off of something that I uh, saw the elder and I kept uh, Yatazak going into how all of what the, the will of the Heavenly Father has set in the heavens, how it plays out in the earth and how us as vessels uh, in these corruptible bodies at this appointed time, we have to trust in the will of the Lord, you know, and just have confidence and faith in the Lord that our steps are going to be correctly guided to where we're going to always be in the, the best uh, position to be blessed, to have life, you know, and not fall into the traps and, and the things that uh, bring forth uh, sin, which we know the wages of sin is death. So with all being said, hopefully this made sense and edified. I'll leave it off on that. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.